When you think about the holiday season, are you filled with excitement and joy or are you filled with dread and anxiety? In today's video, I'm going to give you seven tips on how you can have a really enjoyable and stress-free holiday season this year in 2020. So if you don't want to miss that, keep watching because that's coming up right now. My name is Danielle. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're returning. Today I want to give you seven tips on how you can have an enjoyable, relaxing, and stress-free holiday season this year in 2020. I do think that for some people the holidays roll around and they really end up feeling like this. And I do think that for a lot of people, people that may have found joy and excitement in the holidays are going into the holidays in 2020 feeling like this. I literally can't even. When they have never felt like that before, maybe in the past they've always loved the holidays, they've always been excited. I think particularly this year in 2020, there are many reasons why a lot of us might be feeling stress and anxiety going into this particular holiday season, whether it be loss of a loved one, dealing with illness, dealing with financial challenges, dealing with the fact that we are not able to travel the way we normally would to see our loved ones in person the way we want. So there are a lot of varying reasons why this particular year might be more stressful than years in the past and I really want to talk about that because I do think it's really important to alleviate as much stress as you can so you can really try to enjoy the holiday season as much as you can so without further ado let's get into the seven tips I want to share with you and the first tip I want to share with you is to plan now I'm a person that I will start planning for Christmas the next following year usually in about February or March I'll start thinking about it I'll start making lists and I find that to be really helpful now I didn't always do this I was definitely the person that was up on Christmas Eve till 2 or 3 in the morning wrapping presents and especially after I have kids and let me know in the comments holler in the comments at me if you have kids and you've had this experience as a parent where you are up till 2 or 3 in the morning on Christmas Eve wrapping presents and then your kids wake you up at 5 a.m. to open presents on Christmas Day and you move through Christmas Day like a zombie because you're so completely exhausted and you get through Christmas Day thinking oh thank God it's finally over I suffered many many Christmases like that feeling like that and finally last year I decided no more I always aspired to have my Christmas shopping done early and really have everything prepared and ready but I never really did that until last year last year was truly the first year that I really had everything done by Thanksgiving, everything wrapped and set to go. And let me tell you, it really allowed me to enjoy my holiday season. I planned, I saved. I have to say, personally, I gave my family a spectacular Christmas last year. And even my younger son said, oh my gosh, mom, this is epic. He was so excited. And it's not just about the gifts you give, but it's about the fact that I was present in the holiday. I was available emotionally and physically to spend time with my family because I wasn't so harried, rushing around, trying to buy things, trying to organize things at the last minute. So I think my family really enjoyed that. This year is going to be definitely different because I definitely don't have the financial means that I had last year. And this year I did decide to sell a handbag to fund the Christmas that I wanted to give my family because I did still have some items that I wanted to get for them even though they were really gracious and really wonderful and kind and said don't worry about buying anything that's what I chose to do but I am on track to finish my Christmas shopping by Thanksgiving and really be able to sit back and relax so even now if you haven't planned anything you still can do it so really sitting down with your significant other if that's applicable with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and a pad of paper and starting to plan out what you're doing for the holidays. Are you going anywhere? Are you staying home? Are there travel plans that have to be made? Are there other arrangements that have to be made? What kinds of things do you want to be cooking if you are staying home? What kind of menus do you need to start thinking about? Are you having company or are you not? Those kinds of things need to be decided in advance and if you do decide those in advance it does make your holidays run so much smoother. But starting to plan and write things down will really help you bring focus to where your holidays is going what you're gonna do over the holidays and really what you need to prepare for so that you're not caught off guard or you're not trying to do things in the last minute 
The second tip I have for you is budgeting, and that kind of goes along with planning, especially when we're talking about menus and buying food. Let me tell you, you guys know if you have a family or if you've ever hosted Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving is an expensive holiday. It really is. So with budgeting and planning, delegating. Delegate when you can delegate. Don't take that burden all on yourself, especially if you're dealing with financial issues this year, but really delegating and really budgeting and looking at your budget what you're able to do and being realistic. I think that's really important and having those conversations that might be challenging for you, especially if you haven't dealt with financial issues in the past holidays, sitting down with your loved ones or your family and saying, hey, things are different this year. I have this budget this year. Maybe deciding that instead of buying for all your siblings or your entire family that you're gonna do a name draw or maybe deciding that this year we're gonna forego gifts. We don't need to do gifts. But really looking at your budget and deciding what you can afford or what you wanna spend is really key in reducing your stress and anxiety because you're not running around and trying to buy gifts with no plan, willy-nilly, not having a budget in mind. Research shows that when we shop like that, we we tend to spend a lot more money. My son asked me what my budget was for Christmas and I hadn't really decided yet so I said I don't know. So make your wish list and put anything you want on there and prioritize your wish list as far as what you want the most and I'll look at my budget and make decisions after I do my budget. That's another tip as far as planning and budgeting goes. Have people that you're gonna get gifts for make wish lists and give you their wish list so you have plenty of time to find deals, to shop. A lot of retailers are dropping their Black Friday specials and deals right now as I'm filming this on November 11th, you can find Black Friday deals early this year. So getting those wish lists in and really getting requests from people that you are going to buy from early is another key as far as planning and budgeting goes and it really can help you do that. And then you can really see if someone gives you a wish list and maybe nothing that they want is within your budget, you have time to talk to them and tell them maybe what your budget is so that they can put more suitable or appropriate things on their wish list for you to shop from. The third tip I have kind of goes along with the first two and that is really setting realistic expectations. Your expectations this year might be different than they were last year, but also talking to your family members, your friends, your children, and really telling them, hey, listen, this year this is what we're doing because this is what we decided our budget is or this is what we're able to do and really setting those expectations up front. Don't feel guilty about it, but I feel that really setting those realistic expectations up front in advance really can help you avoid drama, stress, and anxiety moving into the holiday season, especially as you start to prepare and shop. And going along with that, my fourth tip is really prioritizing what's important in the holiday season. Really bringing it back to family, spending time together, really bringing it back to the core of why we're celebrating the holiday and what's most important to you. I am a Christian, so at Christmas time, we celebrate to celebrate Jesus' birth. And really bringing it back to the reason for the season, why it is that you really celebrate I can venture a guess that 100% of you watching this video right now would tell me if I asked you that you have never said the primary reason for you to celebrate Christmas is to buy a bunch of stuff and give a bunch of gifts. That is not really the reason that we celebrate Christmas. And you would also tell me the real reason that you celebrate Thanksgiving is so that you can showcase that you have the absolute best pie. You can showcase that you made the biggest, most elaborate Thanksgiving feast. That's not the reason we celebrate Thanksgiving. We celebrate Thanksgiving so that we can spend it with family, with friends, and really be thankful for the things that we do have and for our blessings. So really going back to prioritizing why we're celebrating the holidays and really what is most important for us in the holiday season can also really help you set those realistic expectations as I just talked about. The fifth tip that I want to share with you is letting go of the pressure. I feel like we have so much pressure during the holiday season. Pressure to cook these amazing large meals, pressure to entertain, pressure to be the best host, pressure of consumerism and pressure of commercialism to buy a ton of gifts and do all these things, you know, bake all these cookies, be on all these drives, really let go of that pressure. Pressure to keep up traditions and do the things that we've always done. And I think one of the best ways to alleviate stress, to alleviate anxiety and relax a little bit and be able to breathe a little deeper is to let go of that pressure. Let go of that pressure 
don't conform to things that you don't want to do, it's time for you to put your foot down and decide what it is you really want to do and what it is you don't. And to tell the people in your life that you need to talk to, hey, I'm not doing this this year because I don't want to do it. I don't have time for it. It's too much for me. It's overwhelming. I'm not doing it. And that is okay. Keep in mind too that just because you've always done something in your family or something is tradition, if it's not practical, feasible, or financially smart for you to continue to do that tradition, you don't have to do it. Or you could forego it this year and maybe pick it up next year. But let go of some of that pressure because pressure drives us to do things that we don't really want to do to impress people that we don't really care about. And in the end, a lot of things that we do that are pressure driven are things that we could dispense with that people don't really care about. A lot of times the pressure that drives us is our internal pressure because we want to impress. We want to be the best. We want to get a lot done. We think that people need things that they really don't need in order to have a wonderful holiday with us when all they really need is our time and attention and our love and that's what they really crave. And so if you can give them that, that's what they're really wanting anyway. So let go of the pressure. My sixth tip that I wanna share with you will come as no surprise because I talk about it all the time on my channel and that is make the time for yourself to indulge in some self-care. Really schedule it, budget your time appropriately so that you can have some downtime, some time for yourself, some time to take care of yourself because if you are so harried and always running around, taking care of things, trying to do too much and do things for other people, you are gonna run yourself ragged, you're gonna get exhausted and you're not gonna enjoy the holiday season. Especially if you're a person that might find this holiday season hard because maybe you're grieving. Maybe you've lost a loved one over the past year or over the past several years and you find the holidays really challenging, really take a deep breath, take time for yourself, really accept that you're grieving and indulge in some self-love, really surround yourself with people that can empathize, sympathize, and really give you the support that you need over the holiday season and don't put too much pressure on yourself. Make sure that you take the time to take that deep breath, relax a little bit, indulge in that self-care, and especially if you're hurting or you're grieving, take the time to acknowledge your feelings, accept your feelings, and give yourself the time you need to grieve because it is absolutely okay and it's healthy to do that, so make sure you take the time to do that. Okay, my last tip, my seventh tip, is just to sit back, smile and relax, and enjoy the holidays. Whatever happens will happen. Remember that you choose your attitude. I talk about this all the time because I really believe it. I think it is so important. And you, as the adult in your home, set the barometer, set the thermometer, and the temperature for your home. You set the tone, you talk to your kids, you make sure they know that they can adjust their attitudes, that they don't have to be disappointed if they don't get everything that they want for Christmas, or maybe they don't get to do the things that they normally do over the holidays, like travel or see their friends or do the things that they really are looking forward to. You set the tone. You be the one in your household to have the positive attitude. Really resolve that come hell or high water, you are going to enjoy the holidays and you're just going to relax. And sometimes there's chaos. Sometimes things don't go as we planned. And you know what? whatever. That's okay. You can enjoy the holidays anyway. Hey, listen, I've got a bonus tip for you. If you are really struggling and you're at a breaking point and you're feeling absolutely like this and you're telling yourself, I literally can't even go in the bedroom or even the bathroom if you have to. When my kids were little, I had to lock myself in the bathroom. It was the only place I could get any privacy and turn on YouTube and binge watch my videos because my videos will fill you with some positivity, encouragement, and motivation. So hey, you guys, I appreciate you watching. If you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up, like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already subscribed. And you guys, I'd love it if you'd follow me on Instagram and join me for my Saturday morning Instagram live streams at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time where I connect with you on a more casual basis. We talk about everything and I share some personal things in my life and I encourage you. I would love to see you on my Instagram live stream on Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. But thank you so much for watching. I will look forward to seeing you in my next video and remember to make your everyday ordinary life extraordinary.